Andrew, this month we're concentrating on core groups or launch teams. I guess it depends on where you come from, what you call them. Mm. But they have to contain people. And, and I guess you have to sit down and think to yourself, who am I going to bring with me straight away? And who am I going to start hiring You know, when I start expanding that leadership team? Uh, can you give us a bit of an idea of how things went for you at EV? Yeah, wow, well, okay. The, the, um, it's a good question. Uh, when you start a church plant, there, is, there are people and roles that are helpful to have in a core group, but not essential. The, you know, under God, you can do the church parachute plant, where, which is largely what we did. We, you know, we landed here with one other couple and, uh, and no real core group to speak of. It was just us. Um, so we didn't, and God can do that. God has blessed missionaries who have landed and so on. So we mustn't get too caught up on you have to have a certain, um, but the things that are helpful in a core group, I'd say some, some things that are, are very important if we're going to run churches the way we are typically running them. Again, there are other models you can use, but if we're going to be running a public event where we're seeking to gather new people, I, I think there's some critical roles you want to ensure that don't fall to you as the lead planter, but rather are delegated and diversified. I think to have someone who can uh, run your services, your music, your emceeing of the event uh, is a very great freedom. It you know, creates a context where I, the preacher, if I'm the lead pastor, can focus on a particular aspect. The um, And also, there's a skill thing there. I just, you know, I didn't have skills in music. I like to think I'm very good, but I'm actually quite hopeless. And so to have people who brought their gifts to that was enormously helpful. The other one is uh, to have a back-end person, to have someone who can do all the, you know, setting up um, the, the back-end structural stuff, thinking about a lot of admin areas and so on. The more that you can free yourself up from that, you can, you as a lead pastor can give yourself to the discipling, developing of people, the maturing of people, which is largely where our training is and our expertise is, and we want to maximise the opportunities to do that. So from the very beginning, I had a couple of men who, you know, I never set up, I, I never put out chairs, I never packed up chairs, um, because we had a we had a, a, a small group, but a really wonderful group of men who did that, and uh, a number of women as well. The other one is a kids' ministry. If we're going to run churches that are seeking to attract families to have you know, a Sunday school or what we call an EV kids ministry, to have that kind of ministry resourced by people who can be out there doing it is quite critical. So to find that in a core group, someone... Now, for a little while it was my wife, but after about six months we worked hard to get her out of that role. And it's interesting how necessity is the mother invention. When we determined you have to get out of this, Cathy, we did then find the person. Uh, it was interesting before then we couldn't find anyone until we had to then we found the person. Can I just interrupt for a second there, because as you touched on a related issue, um, your wife and, and the role that Kathy played in terms of the team itself, obviously that shifted. Did that happen with other people too? Now, Kathy shifted onto what, more, more women's pastoral work? Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, it, it depends on their wife and the gifts and so on. One of the characteristics of a church plant is everyone has to be in. You know, there's no passengers. And so one of the things we're looking for in couples who are putting their hands up to plant is, is the wife a full partner in this work or is she thinking, I'm going to do my job while he's doing his thing? Because there's so many jobs that you just need everyone in on, all hands on deck. So, um, you, you know, it might not be with giftings that a, a wife partners by being the children's ministry person for that short time early on, but she might have to do something else. Now, Kathy's gifts lent itself to organising these various things. Uh, so we are greatly blessed by her partnership. The, the other thing I'd say, I think you need uh, someone in your core group for, or some way to facilitate it happening, is your finance person. Uh, now, one of the things some of our larger churches, EV does this, is we're providing some of that back-end financial support for new churches until they get on their feet. Okay, so a mother church could pro provide yeah. that. That's, that. That's one option. Yeah. What are some of the other options? Where else could you get that support if you didn't have the accountant who was part of your team? Well... If you're doing it in a denomination, some denominations will provide some of that support. Not not many that I know of. FIAC can provide some of that. But that, that's the kind of places you're looking, really. Uh, you might from uh, you might find someone who's a partner church, perhaps not the mother church, but just another congregational member, the person that you can find in another setting who will do your books for you. But that's critical. To have, to have a person 
one of the things that causes plants and new businesses to fail is poor financial management. So we've got to be on top of that from the very beginning. Now, given those kind of somewhat critical roles, th there are then areas that are very helpful to have in place that aren't you. So an incorporation person, to have someone who can manage the connecting of new people into church life and gathering them and creating community and so on, to have someone investing energy in that area is hugely beneficial. And when it's not you, uh, it actually begins to diversify the work profoundly. The the other areas, uh, you know, you, you're looking for someone who um, will support you in the maturing of believers and developing leadership in all the growth group work and, and so on. And the other one, of course, is um, facilitating a larger sense of how we can make mission happen across church. Now, you actually felt so strongly about those three ideas that they were, that was... That almost sounds like Craig Dobby, who was the first person who uh, who you put on. Was that the idea yeah. that you needed to divest yourself of that and let someone focus in on? Yeah, yeah. We, we, as, as we think about church life, the the engine that facilitates everything else happening is the maturing of believers. And so, right at the heart of the core group, you actually desperately need people who get the gospel. You, know, you, you can talk about the ministry positions people might need to have and what's helpful to have, but what you really need in a core group are people who get the gospel, who are growing, who are infectious with their sense of who Jesus is and what he's done. And so that we, we prioritise the investment of energy in having that happen as the, the real kind of undergirding of everything. And so for me, early on, to find someone who could bolster me in that work, it's like a Craig, very helpfully and brilliantly came in and he worked intensely with our leaders and began to develop that whole side of our work uh, as he and I worked the mission side of things. And over time, we began to you know, carve off and more specialise as the resources grew and developed. But resources grow and develop because people are being matured and they're changed. Their lives are growing and they want their friends to grow and that all becomes infectious. So I, I just want to capture this idea a little more. If, um, you, if someone came to you and said, look, you know, I'm struggling with my core group because I just, they don't seem to be mature enough to pick something off, then you might be saying, look, the person you're looking for or the role you're looking to fulfill so you can have more resources is this sort of uh, maturing pastor. Yeah, which, which we would expect the lead planter has gifts primarily in that area. So, um, you, you know, that, my strengths are, you know, a mission and maturing and deepening people in the faith. They're the things I bring to it. So early on, I'm discipling and working with people and seeking to set up a mission, a gender for church. But with all the other demands of leading a church, your, your time is quite limited to really push those areas along. And so to get further resource in, whether it's a part-time person, uh, whether it's a very high-level lay person, a non-paid staff member, um, in, in our case, you know, after 18 months, I think it was, you know, I was determined to really strengthen that whole area and get, get a Craig in who would, who would get alongside hardcore, push hard together with me. Mate, that's been excellent. Not just the beginning of getting the team together, but also how you're going to expand it and under God who you're looking for. So that's, that's just brilliant. Thanks for your time. We'll have a, an email address come up in a moment for people to send you more questions. But until the next time, we'll just wave and say goodbye. Thanks. <laughs> 